Welcome to Upon This Rock. Today we're continuing the series of Through the New Testament in 2022. We're in Luke chapter 22, starting in verse 1. Now the feast of the unleavened bread drew nigh, which is called the Passover. And the chief priests and scribes saw how they might kill him, for they feared the people. Then entered Satan into Judas, surnamed Iscariot, being of the number of the twelve. Satan can use people just as God can use people. Of course, neither take our free will. Judas's actions were still his own, and Satan was only able to enter him because he allowed it. Verse 4, And he went his way and communed with the chief priests and captains how he might betray him unto them. And they were glad and coveted to give him money. And he promised and sought opportunity to betray him unto them in the absence of the multitude. Then came the day of unleavened bread, when the Passover must be killed. And he sent Peter and John, saying, Go and prepare us the Passover, that we may eat. And they said unto him, Where wilt thou that we prepare? And he said unto them, Behold, when ye are entered into the city, there shall be a man meet you, bearing a pitcher of water. Follow him into the house where he entereth in. And ye shall say unto the goodman of the house, The master saith unto thee, Where is the guest chamber? Where shall I eat the Passover with my disciples? And he shall show you a large upper room furnished, there make ready. And they went and found as he had said unto them, and they made ready the Passover. When the hours were come, he sat down and the twelve apostles with him. And he said unto them, With desire I have desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I say unto you, I will not eat any more eat thereof until it be fulfilled in the kingdom of God. And he took the cup and gave thanks and said, Take this and divide it amongst yourselves. For I say unto you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God shall come. This is referring to the marriage supper of the Lamb, as seen in Revelation 19, verse 9. Continue on verse 19. And he took the bread and gave thanks and break it, and gave unto them, saying, This is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. The first Passover brought God's people out of Egypt and made them a nation. The new Passover created the church that united every nation through Jesus Christ. Jesus came to establish a new covenant, not to celebrate past deliverance from a nation, but rather bring deliverance to every nation from the bondage of sin. Verse 20, Likewise, also the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you. His blood is what has purchased our redemption. And it is that blood that must be applied to our lives. By stating he will institute a new covenant, he is here claiming deity. Verse 21, But behold, the hand of him that betrayeth me is with me on the table. And truly the Son of Man goeth as it was determined, but woe unto the man by whom he is betrayed. And they began to inquire amongst themselves which of them it should be to do this thing. And there was also strife among them, which of them should be accounted the greatest. He said unto them, The king of the Gentiles exercised lordship over them, and they that exercise authority upon them are called benefactors. But ye shall not be so. But he that is greatest among you, let him be as the younger, and he that is the chief, as he that doth serve. For whether is greater, he that sitteth at meat, or he that serveth, is not he that sitteth at meat, but I am among you as he that serveth. The world regards those that are served to be the greatest, but Jesus says the greatest are those that serve. Verse 28. Ye are they which have continued with me in my temptations, and I appoint unto you a kingdom, as my Father hath appointed unto me, that ye may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom, and sit on thrones judging the twelve tribes of Israel. Those who serve will be rewarded in the end. Verse 31. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for thee, that thy faith fail not, and when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. Satan desired to destroy Peter, just as he des desires to destroy me and to destroy you. But Hebrews 7.25 says, Therefore he is also able to save to the uttermost those who come to God through him, since he always lives to make intercession for them. Also notice that Jesus said that Peter's faith would not fail. We know Peter was going to deny Jesus, 
but he knew that Peter would find his way back. If you have messed up, do not believe the lie of the enemy that God is done with you, but rather he is waiting for you and interceding for you that your faith fail not. Verse 33, and he said unto him, Lord, I'm ready to go with thee both into prison and to death. Peter's response was an emotional response. Jesus obviously knew Peter better than Peter knew himself, and this is the same case with us. 1 Corinthians 10, 12 says, Wherefore, let him that thinketh he stand, take heed lest he fall. Verse 34, And he said, I tell thee, Peter, the cock shall not crow this day, before thou shalt thrice deny that thou knowest me. And he said unto them, When I sent you without a purse and scrip and shoes, lacked ye anything? And they said, Nothing. Then he said unto them, But now he that hath a purse, let him take it. And likewise he scrip, and he that hath no sword, let him sell his garment and buy one. For I say unto you, that this is that is written must yet be accomplished in me. And he was reckoned among the transgressors, for the things concerning me have an end. Jesus had already told his disciples that he would be rejected and crucified in chapter 17 and 18. He is now telling them that it will happen soon. Verse 38, And they said, Lord, behold, here are two swords. And he said unto them, It is enough. Their response was to say that, hey, we have two swords, as if to suggest that they would fight those that would come against Jesus. His response was simply, it is enough, or perhaps enough of this. He ended the conversation, verse 39. And he came out and went, and as he was wont to the Mount of Olives, and his disciples also followed him. And he was at the place, and he said unto them, Pray that ye enter not into temptation. Jesus warns here the battles we face tomorrow is won or lost today. If you can't pray today, do not expect victory tomorrow. Verse 41. And he was withdrawn from them about a stone's cast and kneeled down and prayed, saying, Father, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. Here we can see Jesus in his humanity praying. Uh, if you're wondering what I mean by in his humanity, I will have two videos linked in the description below. One on the dual nature of Jesus Christ and the other on oneness overall, um, the oneness of God with further explanation on these topics. Um, by the humanity of Jesus wanting the cup of judgment to pass from him uh, if it was possible, but then ultimately accepting uh, the cup, we see that it is only by what he accomplished on the cross that we can be saved. There is no other path to salvation. Verse 43, And there appeared an angel unto him from heaven, strengthening him. And being in agony, he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat were as if it were great drops of blood falling down to the ground. Scripture here doesn't say that it was blood, but rather it was like great drops of blood. However, Clark did point out and said this. He said, There have been cases in which persons in a debilitated state of body or through horror of the soul have had their sweat tinged with blood. Cases sometimes happen in which, through mental pressure, the pores may be so dilated that the blood may issue from them so that they may have a bloody sweat. Verse 45, And when he rose up from prayer and was come to his disciples, he found them sleeping for sorrow. And he said unto them, Why sleep ye? Arise and pray, lest ye enter into temptation. Once again, Jesus states, We must pray. Don't expect to overcome temptation and addictions if you do not seek God daily. Verse 47, and While he yet spake, behold, a multitude, and that he that was called Judas, one of the twelve, went before him and drew near unto Jesus to kiss him. And Jesus said unto him, Judas, betrayest thou the Son of Man with a kiss? When they which were about him saw what would follow, they said unto him, Lord, shall we smite with the sword? And one of them smote the servant of the high priest and cut off his right ear. And the gospel of John, of course, lets us know this was Peter. Verse 51, And Jesus answered and said, Suffer ye thus far. And he touched his ear and healed him. Then Jesus said unto, his chief pri unto the chief priests and the captains of the temple and the elders which were come to him, Be ye come out as against a thief with swords and staves? 
When I was daily with you in the temple, you stretched forth no hands against me, but this is your hour in the power of darkness. Then took they him and led him and brought him into the high priest's house, and Peter followed afar off. When they had kindled a fire in the midst of the hall and were sat down together, Peter sat down among them. But a certain maid beheld him as he sat by the fire and earnestly looked upon him and said, This man was also with him. And he denied him, saying, Woman, I know him not. And after a little while, another saw him and said, Thou art also one of them. And Peter said, Man, I am not. And about the space of one hour after another, confidently affirmed, saying, Of a truth, this fellow also was with him, for he is a Galilean. And Peter said, Man, I know not what thou sayest. And immediately while he yet spake, the cock crew. And the Lord turned and looked upon Peter. And Peter remembered the word of the Lord, how he said it of him, Before the cock crow, thou shalt deny me thrice. The Greek word used here means to for look means to look with love and concern. Verse 62, And Peter went out and wept bitterly, and the men that held Jesus mocked him and smote him. When they had blindfolded him, they struck him on the face and asked him, saying, Prophesy, who is it that smote thee? And many other things blasphemously spake they against him. And as soon as it was day, the elders of the people and the chief priests and the scribes came together and led him into their council, saying, Art thou the Christ? Tell us. And he said unto them, If I tell you, ye will not believe. Their questions, of course, was not sincere. Verse 68, And if I also ask you, ye will not answer me, nor let me go. Hereafter shall the Son of Man sit on the right hand of the power of God. And then said they all, Art thou then the Son of God? And he said unto them, Ye say that I am. And they said, What need any further witness? For we ourselves have heard of his own mouth. And I do want to point out here, Son of God. We see this throughout the New Testament. We also see um, you know, Judas is called the Son of Perdition. Um, when Jesus sends out his, his disciples to evangelize, he says, if you find of man of peace, I, I believe that's uh, Luke 17 where he says that. When the Bible says son of, it is showing and displaying a characteristic, a nature, an attribute. So by saying he was the son of God, he was declaring to be God. Thank you for joining up on this rock. Hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. God bless.